Hey guys, Phil here at Wood Street Farm. I'm going to give you today the final walkthrough of the set up tree lot. I'll give you some of the ins and outs of you know what we've done and what we've learned so far. Yesterday, I'm filming this on Thanksgiving Day. Yesterday, we did a little bit of a soft opening. We opened just in the afternoon from 3 to 6 p.m. We sold a handful of trees, including a couple really big ones, and uh, learned a couple things about our setup that we need to make an adjustment for. But we are ready to open tomorrow that'll be black friday and we'll be open all day friday saturday and sunday here after thanksgiving so here's where people are going to be entering our property i've shared this with you before if you've seen our videos there's the sign that we just made this year had some people yesterday taking pictures with that and then over here is the bulk of the tree lot right now we have i think 36 trees on display i'm thinking about putting a few more trees out here just so that we have uh, a little bit more inventory and that way as we're selling if we can't restock as quick as we want to there's still a really good selection out here so that's my one thought about the quantity of trees and the selection that's out here we got some really nice looking trees from spruce ridge tree farm in just outside of blacksburg virginia it's about a three hour drive from here and we have more varieties this year than we had last year it's the same supplier that we got trees from last year uh, they grow really nice trees. There are a lot in here that I'm calling A-plus trees, and I put kind of a, a premium price on. I'll share with you some more information about prices here in a minute. But we've got uh, Canaan firs and Fraser firs and Douglas firs and Korean firs, all four of those fir, fir varieties in a good selection of sizes from like six foot up to nine nine and a half and then i have um once we get above that uh, the selection goes down just a little bit i have mostly canaans and a couple frasers um i'll show you some of the really big ones here in a second because they're pretty impressive and then we also have some blue spruce so I, I keep some blue spruce here on the smaller side there's one right here next to me that's a small little five foot blue spruce and then i have some six to seven foot blue spruce as well so that's pretty much a run through of the selection and you can see looking around the trees all have nice shape they're really full and i have uh so far unwrapped only like two trees so far that i would call a number two tree and um, i put a little discount on those trees so for anybody that comes that's looking to save a little bit of money uh, we do have a couple trees that maybe there's a hole maybe there's a bare spot maybe some of the branches down low aren't as thick as you might like something like that and we'll call that a number two tree and we'll give it uh, a little bit of a discount so um Anyway, that's kind of the run through. I've got my extra stock just over here behind the shed. This stays shaded all day long. So today you can see I'm in short sleeves. It's almost 70 degrees today, which is really unusual. So we want to keep as many of our trees as possible in the shade. We had a little bit of rain come through last night. And along with that rain, there was some wind, which kind of brings me to the next point that I wanted to bring up with you guys is the way that we've set our trees up out here. We push posts into the ground. I shared that in a previous video. And most of the time, the tree looks and feels pretty stable if you just kind of slide the tree down over the post. And uh, as long as you get that post really close to the trunk, the branches kind of interlock around the post and it's generally pretty stable except when it's windy and it's breezy today. And there was some real gusty wind that came through overnight with the rains. So we came here today and there was about 15 of the trees um, or about a third of the lot was knocked down. So we had to go back through and tie the trees up with twine just to make sure that they stay up. And um, generally that's what I'll do is just I'll stand a tree up if it feels sturdy I'll leave it and if it ends up falling down throughout the day it, that I only give it one chance without the twine um, I come back then and uh, tie it up with the twine so that's how we've been handling it it's a little bit easier for customers to grab their own tree if uh, if we're busy so I'd rather not have them all tied if I don't have to so that's the reason I do that um, but the uh, flip side of all of that is if you don't tie the trees and if they fall down um, while they're on display, you run the risk of breaking some branches. So I did only have one example of that out of 15 where we now have a broken branch right in the middle of the tree. And, um, you know, now that tree, you know, doesn't have as good of a look as it did before. So anyway, something that you learn as you go. Let me go ahead and show you now kind of the rest of the setup here with the tree lot. And um, I'll show you some of the other merchandise that we have 
for sale so we can um, do some nice add-ons and uh, then if you guys have any questions or comments just leave those down in the description and I'll answer them as we go so let me show you the extra merch we've got two different uh, old farm gates out here that we're hanging wreaths we got wreaths and swags out here on display just a couple out here right now Stacy's got to catch up she sold a few yesterday and she needs to catch up and sell some more so uh, that's that out here there's another gate on the other side of the tent that i'll show you but this tent we're going to do one-way traffic through it so they're going to enter through the back it happens to be closed right now and um and once they're inside they'll see all the merchandise let me take you in once customers enter the tent they'll see in here uh, we've got pine cones and sticks and different arrangements like that bucket stacy is selling some individual bows and if you hear that noise outside, Hudson's flying the drone. We've got our homemade ornaments on that little stand that I made. We've got hats, water bottles, and we've got a few other things, like there's some tree stands on the floor, and we've got some other things that are actually put away still. There is one more piece of merchandise that I'm excited to show you. I have actually got it in the shed. I put it away. I didn't leave it out here overnight. But I ended up offering it on our website as well. So you guys can buy some. I'll show you that here at the end of the video. I'll show you the tree section here next. We did pick up a used shaker a couple weeks ago. I don't think I shared that with you guys previously. But I got some good use of that out of that already. That works out really well. It's in the tent here because I didn't want it to get rained on last night. Uh, but I'll just wheel that out here later. And then here's our tree prep area. So I've got the baler there. We usually set up the shaker right over here is what we did yesterday. So we could go straight from shaking and it's kind of centered so people could end up bringing their trees this way or they could bring us their trees around the back of the tent. I need to do something with those cords that are on the ground so trees and people aren't getting tangled up in those cords. That's only one of the improvements I need to make. Um, and then I was running a, an electric chainsaw out here to cut the trunks of the trees. I had a pair of loppers out here to cut the lower branches off. We'd pull it through the net baler, bale it up, and people would head out to their cars that way. The bigger trees we loaded up on the four-wheeler with, the, um, with the trailer on it so people didn't have to carry their trees all the way to the parking lot, and that has worked out well. We lucked out this year, we were able to get some really nice bigger trees. So I've got some of those stacked here against the fence. Some of them already left yesterday. I mean, the people that want big trees know that they sell out quickly and they were some of the first ones to come out when we said we were doing a soft opening. I think I have maybe six or seven trees over nine feet left and that's it. But I've got a couple monsters. This one right here is actually about 13 feet. I've got another one here on the ground. That's about 13, 14 feet. And that's a Fraser. That one looks really nice. Um, from what I can tell anyway, I actually haven't even unwrapped it yet, but I need to get it unwrapped, get it stood up and opened up. Um, I've got one over here. It's like nine foot. Got one over there. It's about nine foot. And then all the rest of these trees that are open are kind of your normal six to eight footers. But I just started opening trees up. So as we start to sell them, we can just grab from here and take them out and replenish. Uh, I also started using the tractor with pallet forks on it. I bought the little clamp on forks. I don't even think I've showed you guys that yet. But that has worked out well because I can go and grab some trees uh, from the shaded area over there that I showed you earlier. Drive the tractor on around the lot, bring it in the backside here, and then we can just unwrap, shake, and stage trees whenever we have time. So before we open tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and grab another pallet full of trees. I can fit a good 8 or 10 trees on each pallet depending on uh, what sizes they are and we can have you know a decent little selection of trees staged over here ready to go this is the product that i was most excited about that sun is blasting in my face so i know you probably can't see my eyes but anyway that is a woods tree farm christmas blend dark roast coffee this is from a local coffee roaster here uh, near richmond virginia they actually live in our neighborhood and they've been roasting coffee for several years and they're just starting to get into uh kind of wholesaling and co-packing and that kind of thing and i said hey can you do a woods tree farm coffee they said yes 
here it is. Um, so we like their coffee, it's good stuff, and we know that it's good quality, and we know that it's fresh. This was just roasted two days ago, put in a package yesterday, I picked it up yesterday, and now it's ready for sale. So that's about as fresh of a cup of coffee as you can get. And um, we're really excited to start selling it and just have some other stuff out here available for our customers to enjoy and remember their experience at our farm by you know having extra merchandise to, that they picked up while they're here. I know some of you guys are going to ask, how many trees did we get? And how did you come up with that number? So let me explain it to you. Take a couple minutes here. Last year, we actually ordered 150, what was it? 153 trees, okay? And out of that 153, 30 were sold to a bank that did giveaways. And... Um, so I kind of don't really count those. I mean, we made money on those, obviously. But in terms of trying to figure out how many are we going to sell in our tree lot, I didn't count those. And we didn't have that order again this year. So uh, if we went back and looked at what we actually sold, because there were some trees left over, we donated some, some went on a burn pile, um, and you know obviously we kind of lost money on those. But uh, the trees that we were able to sell was 108 last year. Um, so when I did my tree order this year, I figured what's kind of a safe growth rate that, uh, you know, will put us in a good position to sell more than we did last year, but we won't get stuck with a bunch of trees. So I went for about 25, 28% more trees than we did last year. So I ordered 138. Now that was a random number that I came up with was 138. And that was based on that growth rate, double digit growth rate compared to last year. And we are trying this year, like I've showed you, to do a lot more with merchandise. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we have a really good year with significantly more revenue than we had last year. Our prices are also a little bit higher on average this year. And um, I, think, I think it's gonna be pretty good. I think there's a pretty good chance we could sell out or be close to it this opening weekend based on the amount of interest we've had through our website, through email inquiries, over the phone, and on Facebook and Instagram and all that. Um, so one of the stats that uh, I noticed the other week was that our website traffic is actually up almost 200% compared to last year. And last year, of course, we were brand new last year. No one knew that we were around. And I spent a good amount of money on advertising, several hundred dollars on online advertising that generated a lot of clicks to our website. So um, this year, I'm not really doing much of that at all. I'll probably spend a hundred, maybe, if that. And so by comparison, I'm spending a lot less money sending traffic to my website, but people are finding us anyway, and our website traffic is up, like I said, almost 200%. So if a good chunk of those website visitors turn into farm visitors and they come out here and pick out a tree, there shouldn't be any trouble um, converting uh, this inventory here into sales. You might be curious about prices, so let me show you how we're doing that. We're just doing uh, prices by size. So our trees that are less than six foot are 50 bucks. That price includes the Virginia sales tax. Um, the six to seven footers are 65, seven to eight are 76, eight to nine are 95, and over our nine foot, we're pricing those trees individually. I'm doing up to 165 bucks on those like 12 to 14 footers. We are going around and individually tagging some of the A plus trees. So, you know, here's an example of that. Here's a six to seven. Um, we're labeling that as an A plus at 70 bucks. So that's a $5 premium over the normal one. You can see that one is just like super full and it's got great shape all the way around. So we're making that one an A plus tree. That's, you know, the, the type of tree that somebody's looking for, a little fatter, a little thicker than average. Um, that's, there aren't many of those. And those are the ones that we're going to put a little bit of a premium on. And then there's other trees like this Douglas fir right here that's a little thin at the bottom. That one's a seven to eight foot, but we're gonna call that a second and it's gonna end up being about the same price as our six to seven foot. So that's my plan. If you guys have any other questions, I'm gonna wrap it up here because I think that's everything that I wanted to hit on. Um, you guys just let me know down in the comments. I know you will. If you have any suggestions for what to improve around here, obviously those of you who are tree farmers who have experience doing this kind of thing, I am always open to hearing that. So uh, until next time, I will see you on the next video. Hope you guys have a good one. Bye-bye.